Okay, we have to talk about Miss Universe 2022. Oh my word, it was absolutely crazy. It's been some time since the show stopped now. I had something to drink, I had some time to think, and we just have to talk about this crazy edition of Miss Universe. It was very reminiscent in many ways of other editions of Miss Universe, but we'll talk about that later. First off, we have to talk about the stage, the performances, everything. I thought that, you know, the stage, the performances were all amazing. Opening number I definitely thought was amazing. The girls' outfits, I love those outfits so much. They were so, so good. And then the hosts, I thought were actually satisfactory as well. We had, um, you know, we had Olivia Culpo, who was Miss Universe 2012. We had Jeannie Mai. Of course, we had Catriona Gray, who was Miss Universe 2018, and Zuri Hall. I thought all of these women were amazing. All of the judges were women as well. This was definitely a very woman-centered Miss Universe and you know what it was fine it was it was actually very okay and um, I missed Steve a little bit I still think that Miss Universe should have like a clueless male comedian as the host because I feel like that's just it's so funny they make a lot of jokes I did not hear one joke from our hosts this evening unfortunately and for that reason I do miss Steve Harvey a little bit when it came to the top 16 oh my goodness this was when the world fell silent because of course so many amazing women did make top 16 but so many expected top 16 placers went unplaced most notably of which of course Celeste Cortese from the Philippines everyone and their mother expected Celeste to make the top 16 but she did not and that was the most surprising so I definitely think that Celeste will be the next Miss Alto Cuyo which if you guys didn't know is like sort of a an award for a pageant contestant who is very well loved at Miss Universe, you know, beforehand, but then ultimately goes on not placing. I definitely either Thailand or Celeste should be getting that award. Ultimately, I got 9 out of 16 of the top 16. And what I thought was really weird is that they talked about one of the contestants getting into the top 16 through fan votes. And I don't know if... I missed it or what because it was three o'clock in the morning but I don't remember them announcing who the fan vote winner was as a matter of fact I don't remember them announcing the national costume competition winner either which I think is so weird because usually at Miss Universe they will they will tell you who the fan vote winner was and I don't remember them telling us if they did tell us I feel really stupid but I just I don't remember that and I certainly do not remember the national costume competition winner being announced. For swimsuit and gown, all of the top 16 did both swimsuit and gown. For swimsuit, of course, we had the um, capes, which we already saw at the prelims, so I'm not really going to go over that again. But for gowns, there were a lot of safe players when it comes to gowns. I think the only two women who really went way outside of the box when it came to gown was the USA who ultimately won the competition and South Africa who wore this beautiful pink sort of gown with some cultural detail which was astonishing. I absolutely love that gown. It's a shame she didn't make top five because I would love to see that gown just a little bit more but those were really the only two standout gowns for me at this year's Miss Universe competition. Then we had the top five which was Venezuela, USA, Puerto Rico, Curacao and Dominican Republic and the questions that they asked for top five were pretty good. Venezuela was the only one who used an interpreter but she didn't use an interpreter to speak for her but she just used an interpreter to try and understand the questions asked to her better which is something that I can respect. Out of the top five I honestly couldn't tell you who had the best answer because all of these women have such different rhetoric skills from each other and they all bring something unique to the table when it comes to Q&A. So at this point I really didn't know who should make 
top three. Although, of course, I was rooting for Puerto Rico really hard because I did love Puerto Rico and I wanted her to win. Ultimately, if you guys did watch my um, final prediction. And obviously, when I found out the top five, um, you know, South Africa obviously didn't make it which is something that I was sad about, which is so funny that I was sad about that because even in my final prediction, she wasn't in my top five. Yet I was sad when she did not make top five. Explain that. But then when I was feeling sorry for myself because South Africa didn't make it, I just thought back to all of the Filipino fans and the Thai fans who must be so devastated for their countries. In fact, even me, I am so, I'm devastated for the Philippines as well, as well as Thailand. I love Thailand, okay? And I also had the Philippines in my final prediction, so I was sad for them as well. What I really liked is that they did this tribute to um, Chesley Quest, who we sadly lost in January of last year, uh, which was very touching, and it touched me deeply. Then her mother came on, um, talked a little bit about her, talked about talked a bit about a collaboration with a foundation. You know, Chesley did have high functioning depression, which is very important to share that message. Then the top three was announced. And the top three is actually a big deal this year because all three of these women are going to Thailand. All of them are going to be treated to the Miss Universe lifestyle. Of course, one is going to be held above the others just slightly, but I do think that all three of the women chosen for the top three are going to be very important during the Miss Universe reign and very much included, which is why I think it's such a great honor from this point forward. Um, if they're keeping it this way next year, who knows? But I think this year especially, it's such a great honor to be in the top three of Miss Universe because then you get to be very much involved in the Miss Universe reign. Whereas I don't think it's ever been the case that the runners up were, you know, put on a pedestal in this way that they have been this year so i'm very happy for all of the women who made top three of course it was um the usa as well as the dominican republic and venezuela for top three q a all of the women gave a great answer it was basically you know how would you show that miss universe is progressive that it's a great platform for women you know you get the gist i thought all three women gave great answers dominican republic and venezuela did really well but i think what made the usa stand out is the fact that she used the new owner's own words in her answers so she said something about being a transformational leader and that's the exact words that the new miss universe owner used a couple of months ago to describe what she was looking for in the next Miss Universe. We also got to see the beautiful Margaret Gardner, who was, of course, Miss Universe 1978 from South Africa, and she looks fantastic. She also still has her South African accent, which shocked me because I thought she was living in the US, like, since the 1980s. Her Nazis final walk, guys. Ugh, this is a bit of a touchy topic, but I was not impressed with her final walk that much not that the purpose of a final walk is to embrace but you know the fact that she needed help on the one step the one step that there is on stage and somebody had to like was i don't know maybe it just wasn't her choice maybe maybe the person just came uh, out of her own volition but then she stumbled a little bit and also the dress, you know, I know I said I love the USA's black dress, which is something that I usually don't love. Usually I hate black dresses on any pageant stage, but the USA, you know, she came with drama. She came with extravagance. Her NASA's black dress, I just felt like it was the less good black dress of the evening. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just Harnaz's final walk didn't have the impact on me that final walks usually have. You guys, if you know me, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I usually cry. I usually cry at final walk, but I don't know. I Not that I don't feel attached to Harnaz, because, you know, I made an entire video dedicated to her, talking about all of the good thing that, uh, things that she's done during her reign. But yeah, her final walk just didn't hit that much. For me to be honest with you i felt like we saw we saw a different woman a less confident woman than the woman we saw 
when she took her first walk, which is sad because it's supposed to be the other way around. When you do your final walk as Miss Universe, you're supposed to be walking away more vibrant, more confident than you did when you did your first walk. And I, it, it just feels like the reverse, to be honest. So the second runner-up ultimately was the Dominican Republic. So the final two was Venezuela and the USA, which I was pretty happy with. I knew a lot of people had Venezuela as their winner. Some had um, the USA. And I thought it was pretty interesting that the last time the USA one Miss Universe was in 2012 and the last time Venezuela won was in 2013. So I thought this final two combination was pretty cool. And ultimately the USA ended up winning, which I thought was so interesting because as you guys know, a couple of months ago, just when she was crowned, a couple of her fellow Miss USA contestants came out and spoke out against the Miss USA organization apparently because of rigging and they had this whole thing where Miss Universe actually came out and said no they would investigate and then a couple of weeks ago we got an update on that from Miss Montana who was the leader in this expedition and she said that they were on a zoom call with Miss Universe in which they were actually muted they being the contestants who complained and told that no apparently there was no really game so I think that it's so interesting that um, USA ended up winning Miss Universe and I would actually love to know all of those contestants reaction you know I'm not picking any sides in this situation okay I'm not going to say that these women's feelings are not valid and I'm also not going to say that Arbany was not a deserving Miss USA. I think it's just, it's better to just be an observer in situations like this and I just, I want to know what everyone is thinking about Miss USA's win. But anyway guys, that was Miss Universe 2022, a wild ride. Oh, and did I mention that Miss Universe 2023 will be held in El Salvador? I think that's so interesting. That ought to be very interesting. I love when Miss Universe is held in like different countries that they're, that it's not usually held in. I'm just hoping and praying that one of these days it will come back to South Africa or Namibia or perhaps even Angola, somewhere close so that I can go basically. That would be so fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.